uh, that's a wide leg pant, double slits. It's comfortable on all occasions. You can wear it anywhere, to office, visiting, anywhere. Hello, our viewers. A very good afternoon to you all. My name is Mebo, your host, a member of Out and Proud, an African LGBTI charity organization. And today we are doing things differently. As you're all going to be seeing, we are at 56 Dean Street, a usual meeting place where we usually have our workshops. And it's where we're going to be having a podcast from with a few of our members from Out and Proud. And they're going to be sharing with us their skills and, well, tell us a bit about their lives. And yes, if it's your first time to tune in, do not forget to like, share, subscribe and press on the bell icon for notifications for whenever we are tuned in. Yes, our guests are going to introduce themselves. Could you please tell our viewers your names? Hello everyone. My name is Victoria Lisa. I'm originally from Uganda and I'm a proud lesbian currently living in London, Crystal Palace specifically. Hello everyone. I'm Shamira Nemudu. Um, member in um, Out and Proud. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm happy to be here. And um, I love decor. I do decoration as I used to do decoration as a profession in Uganda. Yeah, and as a side as a side gig, as, besides in the other job that I had. Thank you. All right. Thank you for being with us, ladies. Thank you for coming and sharing this platform. And I'm sure our viewers and our members who are with us today are, well, they're eager to hear from you. Well, um, I'm going to start with uh, Lisa. Lisa, you said you're a fashion designer. And could you tell us how you got into fashion? Well, a few years back, I used to be a model doing runway. And um, it so happened I went for um, a cast. It's like an audition. And I was told, you're short. Yeah, all aspects. They're like you they like your color, your size, and stuff like that, but um, we can't take you on because you're short. So, yeah, it was heartbreaking, but um, I didn't want to leave the industry, so I decided to venture into fashion, like doing that the, the work itself. I didn't go to any school. I taught myself all that I know, and of course, the internet, yeah, has helped me a lot. Yes. Uh, w what is it that you specific like specialize in? Because um, fashion is like has a it covers a wide range of things. All these shoes, bags, men, kids, uh, women. What do you specialize in? Uh, when I started, I didn't have my a specialty. I wanted to be everywhere, doing the men, the female, the kids. You know all those kinds of crafts until I, I, I realized myself and um, I think I settled for um, doing ladies so the ladies the girls out there anything you want anything you the ideas you have I can put them down for you and bring it to life for you and um, could you tell us what your view of fashion like your personal view of fashion how would you describe fashion uh, okay um, you know most people think uh, wearing trendy clothes, designer shoes, designer outfits is the fashion. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. Fashion is how you put up yourself, how you put your, your pieces together, your accessories, and your colon as well. Smelling good is an essential in fashion as well. So I would think you gather yourself as you, put, uh, as you dress up, do everything like with time, give it time. Put your pieces together, let everything match. Playing around with colors and fabric is fashion to me. And well, one of our viewers there could be interested in joining the industry. How would you advise them to go about it? To me, I, I, I didn't go to school for fashion. I, I used my phone mainly. You know, when I started fashion, we had, internet was everywhere. We had smartphones already. So what I did not know, I would go to YouTube. I would go to, um, you know, Google, you type in anything. So for as long as you have the passion, you don't need to go to school unless you have a friend or like me, in case you want to learn, you ask me something, I'll definitely help you with that. 
uh, the calculations, of course, some math in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. the draftings and the designs, yeah. It's all about passion. Looks like you're going to get yourself a student here. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting. Yes. Um, well, how uh, do you advise someone to keep up to date with like the latest trends? You see something on TikTok and you'll be like, oh, I'll get that. But really, you're not sure if it's, well, it's trending or it's up to date. It could be, mm. well, someone just got at the back of their wardrobe and got something. I'm like, oh, let me put on this. Don't ever copy people because what looks good on me may not look good on you. Wear what you want, what you feel comfortable in, and it's always going to be the in thing for you. Because I may see it and I'm like, oh, wow, I like your style. And yeah, that's I've already copped it. So be you, do you, and everyone will embrace you. That's all I can say. Um, can we get questions before we go to, or we'll get them all at once? Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Kake, a lesbian from Namibia. I have one question for the fashion design. My question is like, is a fashion design, what type of challenges did you experience in your lifetime, like as a business, as an entrepreneur? What type of challenges did you experience? Well, in, all, in everything we do in life, we always face challenges. Major challenge was, you know, you do a design for a client and they're like, I don't like it. I want something else. So you've wasted fabric, you've wasted your time, you've wasted everything. So basically you have to go back to scratch, get fabric. You need time to do a lot because it's not just like, no. So it needs time, needs patience. So that's my biggest challenge. You face um, losses, buying fabric again, so much time is lost. And um, non-appreciating clients. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm well I just feel like whenever I text um cuz I always find this I don't know I find this fashion and all I see this dress <laughs> and I really want it and whenever I take it to someone to do it for me I never get the exact result I feel like it's hard to always do that yeah. and sometimes well, I understand some people be like no listen I don't want it I either want my money back or you make something else yeah no, that's but me I always just take it I'm like listen like I think that's not my thing I'd rather go to the shop find something that is already done I try it on it fits mm. I take it it doesn't I leave it there <laughs> yeah. like you know it's, it seems kind of like that is the way out yeah, sometimes that's an option as well. yeah. so yeah I get it when people like be like I don't like it yeah. I don't well, uh, do we have any other questions? My question is, um, do, do you ever use bark cloth in your fashion? Is it practical to use bark cloth? And is it true that bark cloth will keep you young and beautiful just as it uh, keeps um, the dead person? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say bark cloth is a fabric, yeah? Usually when you're trying to, to bring out a concept like the busuti, the busuti is a, it's a culture thing. You want to bring out culture. Yeah, we use back cloth. Well, keeping you young is a myth. Uh, it's trendy. <laughs> so why not go for it? And yes, uh, my other question, probably the last one. Uh, how would you say, like you being a lesbian woman, do you think your identity has influenced your work or otherwise in any way? Not really, but being who I am doesn't define what I do. My, my, my handwork is different from my personality. So usually people see what I produce, what, what the outcome than the personality in me, like my identity. Mm. How would you say like your identity or how you identify has, has there been any has it ever interfered or impacted with your profession? Uh, me identifying myself as a lesbian had never impacted like negatively on my business because I was in the closet. No one knew who I was, who I am, until I came here. Of course, you my family know who I am. Support comes in unconditionally. Thank you. And yes, we still have, well, another guest. She's going to be telling us about decoration. 
He's an event planner, uh, Sham. Her name is called Shamila, but she prefers being called Sham. She's going to be telling us about um, her profession as well. Yes, Sham, tell us about how you got into decoration. Um, I'm Shamira Namudu, a member of Out and Proud. I'm proud to be here and I do... I used to do decoration as a side business back in Uganda. I had to flee my country to come to the UK because of my sexuality. And I'm currently staying here peacefully, happily, and proudly to be who I am here. Um, Could you tell us about how you got into decoration? Did you go to school or? No, I actually didn't go to school. It was way back in my senior six vacation. (laughs) <laughs> it was <laughs> I had to it was way back in my senior six vacation. I didn't want to stay home. I started up a business of uh, men's clothes, but the building where I was, it was specifically for deco. So I met a friend, a guy friend who introduced me to the business because I would I would see them going out every weekend doing different uh, functions and I liked it. So he approached me and told me, I think your business is not going well. You're in the wrong building. You're in the wrong area. You need to change business. Um, So he advised me on how to go on it. I started with different little things to hire out. That's how I got into the business officially. Okay. All right. Um, And, uh, well, say someone is planning an event, what would you advise them? Like, what are the first steps do you advise them to take? The first place when you're planning an event uh, is the location, the venue. You need to choose the perfect venue. Um, Of course, decoration brings out everything, the perfect colors. Everyone has their own colors that they would want to use on their function. And that's when I come in. That's when I tell you, oh, these colors are off market. This, This is wrong. What you think is trending is not trending anymore. But the first thing is venue. When you're done with venue rest can come in because everything starts with the venue uh, well well just like fashion i think decoration is also like um like it's a must like it's big there's a lot of things you like people do there's lighting there's the st- setting up there's the flooring the you know yeah. so what exactly do you like say is your specialty as a decorator mm-hmm. when you come to me and you have a function you want me to decorate for you we i'm i'm not talking about way back in uganda I would. I used to have most of the things. Yeah, I would. I would tell you, or um, I would specifically do most of the things apart from hiring tents, bring out the tent on the venue, um, maybe the lightings. But uh, specifically, it would be the entire decoration package as, as it is: the chairs, the tables, the carpets, the boards, the everything. And um, what would you say? Like, for instance, I'm, I'm making an event. Like, yeah. what do you think is a must? Well, it depends on still the function. If it's the wedding, it's the high table. You, okay. you can't go without the high table. That's where the bride and the groom sit. Mm. If it's the birthday, uh, maybe the photo booth. If it's an introduction, still the photo booth where the bride will okay. All right. And the flowers, because you can't, you really, you can't do a function without flowers. Mm. Yeah. You can't do a function without glass, glasses. The tables, the table, like I think everything is necessary because if you don't have tables on the function, where will mm. people sit and, yeah. Would you advise it's best for someone to still have to go to like school, school, acquire a degree and, you know? No, personally, I don't think it needs someone to go to school and learn. Mm. Decoration is more of practical, more than theory, mm. yeah. So what I would advise someone who would want to uh, venture into the deco camp, deco, um, um, business make friends that are in the business mm. try to go on their different sites or different events do not don't focus about how much you're going to work there you can actually go and just look on if you're that bright you can just look on and copy what they're doing but if if you want if you can be paid as well because if you have an event you can't do everything, everything as a decoration as, as a decorator you need um, you need manpower so if you're trying to learn, you can go and talk to a decorator or to a, a friend that you know is in decoration. Ask, ask them to take you to their site. Learn what they're doing. Indulge yourself in what they're doing. 
it will be easier for you to learn. Secondly, if you want to do um, flowers, you can uh, get a person who is a florist because when if you're doing a function, you need a florist on the site, yeah. Mm. So you, if you specifically want to do flowers, you can get a person who is doing flowers specifically. They'll teach you that that can come at a cost. Yeah, that's the only different thing. But decoration as a thing, I don't think it needs going to school and, and learning. learning. Yeah. Okay. And well, uh, how would you say? How would you measure, like, say, a successful? If you've done an event, you know, every bride or every client has their own style of what they want. Yeah. Yes. So if you bring out what the client is expecting or what mm. the client expected, that is like fulfillment to you. You'd be like, I fit the goal. I fit the. Because one client brings the other. If this mm. client likes what you've done, they'll bring then the they'll other one. And someone so else. That, that fulfillment that you get when a client is happy with what you've done, that's it. Uh, yes, uh, we're going to be getting questions from our audience. Uh, is there anyone who would like to ask? My name is Fasakinolua Kemen from Nigeria. So I want to ask, you do the full event. So is it just the decoration or both the food, the drinks and the snacks and everything? No, I do not do the food and drinks. That's a different department. It's it's food and, what is it called? Food and what? Catering. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't do that. So my question is, how, how do you determine your your color is it color combinations besides the client giving you a theme if you've been in the business for long it can it wouldn't be hard but the first thing is you cannot do what the client doesn't want we always run in the line of the client you just advise them accordingly or if if you let's say if you're doing peach you cannot do it with blue or um brown there are colors that uh I think naturally something that you would see that wouldn't look nice. And secondly, if a client comes to you and they have a thing of, oh, I want I want to do a white and blue event, you do for them a, a setup like a sample setup to satisfy their ego and their what they want to to have. Then, if it's not nice, you advise them of like white wouldn't no not white because white goes with everything. Blue wouldn't go with yellow. So you 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 put a sample for them out. Then if they don't like it, if they're satisfied with, no, I don't like this, oh, I won't take this, then you go ahead with uh, maybe advising them of what else would look better with blue or with gold or what is trending actually because the client might come with a color. Oh, I want blue and blue is way, way off. So you tell them, oh, you know what is trending? It's gold and this, it's gold and this, it's silver and that. That's it's nothing like how do you combine the colors. It's always what satisfies the client is what you go with. Okay, yes, and now my last question goes to the both of you. Well, as you well aware, we're having an end of year party, out and proud end of year party. And yes, it is um it is what uh, well it is a custom I should say, part of out and proud. We always want to stand out, we always want to be different, and our parties always are themed on that aspect. This time around we're going to be having a traditional party. So where we expect everyone else to come out wearing something traditional it 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 doesn't really have to be well from your well from your culture because we are a diverse community and we're trying to like to embrace each and everyone and all the cultures at the same time and what advice would you give us that is for the fashion and for the decoration Mm -hmm. because we're having this big massive hall and we still want to keep our theme tradition yeah so what advice are you giving us to make this event successful? Uh, first of all, I will, I wish to see the, the venue first before I advise about anything. And secondly, we do not we do not have to, as you say, it, we, do, we have different uh, cultures and people out here that come from different countries. We can't do deco according to um, every every country, every culture, every like tribe. Mm-hmm. I think what we should focus on is we need to pick out something that can match out for all of us mm-hmm. yeah that if a communion would see they would be they wouldn't feel like oh it's it, because let's say because sham is from uganda she's she's specifically um focused on the ugandan culture yeah i think we should look out for something that adds up all of us f- for like all of us to feel like we're home it's a cul- it's a party for Unique. all of us yeah that's what i think oh well guys Look out for me on that day. 
I'm going to be very unique. Yep. I'm working on my outfit already. Wow. So, uh my advice is don't forget to accessorize. Look your best. Don't put on big clothes. Come on, guys. Make sure it's fitting, accessorize, smell good. Yeah. And you're good to go. Looking forward to seeing you all that day. At December, don't forget. So, well, uh, how, because sometimes people be like, oh, it's just fashion. I'll come wearing my traditional dress, but I'll just put on my trainers. And well, to some, someone might say, well, that's fashion. Because I've seen people go on the red carpet. They're wearing all these, you know, the smart dresses, but they're wearing trainers. And well, it makes the news. Do you yeah. think that is something they shouldn't do? Or well, well I, since it's a traditional event, it just has to be like kind of like what it is. You know, some people think tradition is walking bare feet. No, it's not. Put on your best shoes, your trainers on a gomesi. Yeah, it's cool. I'm shanana. Put on your slippers on for as long as you're comfortable. That's all I can say. Comfort. Okay, yes. Uh, you've heard from a fashion designer and a event planner, ladies and gentlemen. The end of your party is in the doing. So we're covering every bit so far. We have those of you who need advice on how to get your attires, your outfits. I don't know if she is available, but well. Thank you so much, our viewers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for always tuning in. And this has been our podcast for today. Today is Saturday and this is different. This is not what I always do, but yes, we're always out to getting you all something different and special. Um, our fashion designer is going to be showing us one of uh, some of her pieces and I hope you will like them. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Click on the bell icon for notifications for whenever we are tuned in. As our weekends go, we're still going to head down to our basement, G-A-Y. Shake some bones, do some moves, and well, yeah, the party still goes on. Stay tuned in. So, guys, Lisa is going to showcase some of her designs. Like this head tie was made by her, and well, as you can see, it's a lovely piece. And what she's wearing as well was made by her. Yeah, this is a skirt, as you can see. But I turned it into a top. Wow, well, and the rest of our models are going to be coming in. Uh, that's a wide leg pant, double slits. It's comfortable on all occasions. You can wear it anywhere, to office, visiting, Anywhere. That's a peacock hand top. Show us the hand. Yeah, very wide. Can you wear it for a party? As long as you combine it properly with the down a bit and accessorize it. Don't forget. Yeah, that's <laughs> well. This is a gentleman. You can accessorize your looks like with just a touch of African print. Well done, darling. This is an accessory as well, so nothing much to say about it. Gentlemen, always stand out, be unique. Sorry, are you supposed to like wear it, uh, say, medium t-shirts only, or you can wear it on your jumper or your shirt as well? You, not on a jumper, but you can wear it on a shirt as well, yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, this is just a shoulder accessory. Nothing much to say about it. Just a touch of print. Self-explanatory, that's a bag touched with the uh, African map patchwork. <laughs> Yes, in 
summary, these, as you can see, these are models. They're all smart, dressed in African print. And yes, uh, these are fashion. Some of the fashions designs Lisa came up with, and she is a fashionista, as you can all tell. I love the pants, especially, and the head tie. I've been told it looks good on me, so I'll get maybe keep that. And if you out there, you have a talent, you have a skill you would like to showcase, share it with our members or share it out there to the world. Do not hesitate. You can always reach out to us and contact us here and out and proud. We encourage people to come out and showcase what they can do, their capabilities. And we also encourage those of you out there who would like to join or learn a specific skill from one of our members to do not hesitate, contact us. And yes, we do have lovely, kind people who are willing to share because knowing, being knowledgeable helps everyone. And yes, this is um, it for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for viewing. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe, and tune in for more. Stay with us as we go down to our 56, to uh, GAY, to still have, to party. <laughs>